Hey guys, this is part two of how to make 2D templates from 3D Rhino files. And in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some potential problems that you might encounter with certain particular types of forms. Okay, so uh, here I have three variations on the cube, and I'll show you what transformations I did to these two and why those transformations might create problems when you're making or really things to look out for um, when you're making your uh, templates. Okay, so uh, again, you know, as we talked about in the last tutorial, I'm just going to start by first moving these out and away from the zero zero location, right? And I'll go ahead and make an unroll of this regular cube first so we can look at it, right? So that would be our unrolled version of this cube, right? And now uh, we can, we're, we're going to do the same thing with these two, but I'll first talk a little bit about some of the changes that I made to them. Okay. So with this uh, modified version of the cube, what I did is I actually took uh, my circle command and I drew a circle that was uh, from, you know, here to here, as you can see, and, you know, that produced, and then I extruded it. And that produced that back edge of my cube. And then I went ahead and did the same thing, but I made a circle that was smaller there to there. And I actually then moved that circle over here. Okay. And I extruded it, did the same thing. Okay. Uh, and then I used the trim command and I trimmed the, the surface is based off of those two extrusions, okay? And so that's how I ended up with this cube. What's important to know about this cube is that if you make a mirror version of it, so I'm gonna type in mirror, and I'm gonna make a mirror version off of that mirror plane, right? These two objects, right, are now mirrors of each other. But just like our hands, they aren't the exact same object, right? So there is no way to grab this and rotate it, right? And have it be in the same position as, and have it be the exact same object as the other one, right? So I can rotate this and if you see, right? Even though it takes up the same basic space, it actually is, a mirror of itself, right? So it's it's not the exact same object. Okay, so why is that important to note? It's important because when you make an unroll command, you're asking Rhino to unfold all these surfaces and make them flat like this one, right? And if you remember, uh, what basically what Rhino is doing is it is exploding these uh, all these surfaces, and then it is rotating each of the faces relative to what it decides the ground. Okay, so I'm actually going to make a copy of this so that we can see what the potential problem is here. Okay, whoops, got to make a copy, not just the bit. There we go. Okay, perfect. So in this case, if I take this object, and I unroll, and I so in other words, I am going to do it manually, but I rotate 3D and I start rotating things and I rotate them like this, right? So I'm going to do a couple of these spaces kind of like this. You can sort of see here what is already starting to happen. And this, because it's a curved surface, yeah, it actually works better if you just ask uh Rhino to unroll it for you but you can see that as I rotate things I'm opening them up almost like a flower right with the bottom remaining the the side that is looking up so this is the the inside of the object now right is what is facing up in the top right so that's one way to unroll that object I'm not going to do the rest but you can get an idea right and so uh, if I actually, just for consistency sake, I'm going to join this really quickly. I'm going to say unroll surface just so we have it all, right? That's, that's one 
one version. And, and here we actually don't know if this version of it is the same as what happens here, where the inside is facing up. Okay. The other way that, that Rhino could decide to unroll it is like this. You'll see here an important difference. And now instead of rotating 3D across this axis, I can rotate across this one. This is an equally valid answer, right? So what happens when you start doing this? Uh, well, what happens is that now all of a sudden, if I unroll in this direction, my inside actually, right, is now facing down, right? So this is the inside face of this and it is facing down, okay? And what that means is that because I have it either facing up or down, depending on how unroll it, when Rhino unrolls this, it could potentially, depending on how it decides to do it, make this object or its mirror. And it all depends on how it gets folded back together, right? And so actually what's really important to know is that with objects that are sided, that have the potential to be mirrors or produce mirrors of each other, when you use the unroll command, you have to be very careful and actually either decide to uh, mirror, mirror it, print both out and test which way you're folding them or make sure that you're either folding your object inside out or outside in essentially as you make it, okay? So there is issue number one, mirrors. Mirrors are, are uh, funny things, funny geometric problems. They're rather complex uh, and, um, and they're not uncommon, okay? So that is the first, the first type of problem, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and now delete this minus our other guy, move it back over and we can talk about our other type of problem, okay? So you'll notice that with version number two here, I was very specific and I made all of these changes to it based off of extrusions, right? So it was two cylindrical extrusions and then I used them to trim this object. And that's because uh, extrusions have a single degree of curvature. And that means that we can make this object out of paper without any distortions. Or in other words, we can unroll it and there are no distortions to the object. Now, we also talked about this in the last tutorial. There's overlaps here, but again, I can just explode those, move this over to here and problem solved, right? That's different than the type of problem that I'm gonna show you here with this third object. Okay, so this third object, I'll show you how to remake it. Basically, I had my cube. I'm gonna just copy that cube over here. I'm gonna move it over. And what I did was I drew a line from this top caddy corners, right? Press enter, now I had that line. And now I went ahead and used the loft command to create a lock between this extrusion edge and this curve. Press enter. And you'll see, I can already tell that it's uh, flipped. So I said align curves, flipped it over, then press enter again and press OK. And now I used that extrusion, this lock here, to trim the cube. Okay. And there you go. And then I grabbed that and I grabbed the rest of the cube and I jumped. So there it is. There we recreated our, uh, our third cube. Okay. Before I fully join it, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, undo that join. I'm going to hide this part. So I just type hide for a second. So it's no longer gone. And you'll see that what's really important to note about this surface that I, we made, that was the cut surface, is that it is kind of like a saddle. So you'll see how basically it curves in this direction. And it also curves 
in this direction, okay? That's important because it, it has double curvature, right? So it's, it's still a valid surface. It's still very much a very important type of surface. A sphere is another type of surface that has double curvature. It just has them going in the same direction, okay? But this is a saddle, right? Or a hyperbolic paraboloid. And what's important to know about surfaces with double curvature is that you can't really make them out of a single piece of paper, okay? And so I'm gonna go ahead and join this again, move over here. And what happens is if you try to make this object out of paper, you, you can kind of, to a certain extent, Rhino will do its best, but it's not gonna be uh, a 100% accurate model, okay? And I'll show you what, what Rhino does to try to uh, make up for it. But essentially it's going to make a distorted version of this shape. So I'm gonna type unroll surface and again, click enter and you'll see, oh no, yeah, but it totally made it. And it did, it made, it, it unrolled all the surfaces. But if I actually now go back here and you guys can see here in my command tab line, I can actually read all the commands and the results of all of them, right? So for example, that last one, I moved a certain amount over, right? Now, if I go back up and I look at here, my unroll, right? So it said, I selected curves on poly surfaces to unroll, et cetera, et cetera, it said, and then it calculates starting area. Then it unrolled six surfaces, one, two, three, four, five, six. But then if I go back down a little bit, you'll see that it says area is 1% bigger after unrolling. So that means that over the, all of these, it made this piece significantly bigger because it's 1% bigger over the whole area of everything. But that means that this piece is actually probably four or 5% bigger than the actual surface that it was here. And it does that because as it tries to distort it to make a flat piece of material that is relatively the same as this, it has to distort it. In other words, this surface here is not the same as this surface here, okay? Really, what you would want to do is if you, I mean, it, that's one way to distort it. A more accurate way to distort it would be to actually insert new surfaces that approximate that object. So I could, for example, turn it into two triangles and then at least whatever I made, I knew that I would know that those two planar surfaces, this one and this one, would be accurately represented in a make 2D of this, this object. So we go to join and now unroll. And this, there was no distortion. So if I go back, and here I go and look through, you'll see that it creates meshes, but it does not distort them. Okay, that's an important thing to know. So again, uh, it's definitely possible to unroll some surfaces with curvature or with double curvature, but there is distortion that happens when you do that, okay? So those are two important things to keep in mind as you're making 2D templates. Uh, one is the problem of mirrors, and the other one is the problem of curvature, all right? So that's it for the uh, unrolling tutorial. See you guys in the next one.